Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, as many of you will know, I love any projects which involve the use of an SDR receiver. Now, software defined radio opens up so many possibilities when it comes to receiving radio signals, decoding them, demodulating them, and just plain old listening to them. Now, something that I've wanted to try for a long time is radio astronomy. Now, radio astronomy is a subfield of astronomy, but more specifically, it's a study of celestial objects at radio frequencies. Now, did you know that the first detection of radio waves from an astronomical object was back in 1933, when Carl Jansky at Bell Telephone Labs reported radiation coming from the Milky Way? Now, generally, radio telescopes consist of a parabolic reflector, which in some cases can be as large as 100 meters in diameter, with the largest in China measuring around 500 meters across. Obviously, most of us don't have that kind of space or even the money to have such a large disk for radio astronomy. But what we can do is something like this. Now, this is a satellite mesh antenna from Neuralek. Now, if you follow my channel, you would have seen this in a previous video where I was using it to receive signals from a geostationary satellite called Inmarsat. However, due to its center frequency being close to 1.7 gigahertz and it has a wide bandwidth, we can use this antenna to detect the hydrogen line, or in other words, the 21 centimeter spectral line. Now, this originates from the Milky Way. And without getting too technical, it's created by a change in the energy of solitary neutral hydrogen atoms. It is produced by a spin flip transition. And the result of this is electromagnetic radiation at a frequency of 1.42 gigahertz, which can be detected from Earth. Now, this explains why I have this antenna pointing directly up into the sky. Now, I don't have a rotator to change its elevation, so it's just fixed pointing up for now. Now, using this dish size means the signals from the hydrogen line are fairly weak, but to help improve our chances of seeing these signals, we need to use a sawbird filter and a low noise amplifier designed for use at 1.42 gigahertz. Luckily, Neuralek manufacture and sell a device specifically for this purpose and I have this attached at the antenna end. Now this is called a Sawbird Plus H1, and it's available for purchase on many places like Amazon. I'll leave a link below to make it easier for you to find it if you want to try it. Using a run of Formula Zero, low loss coax, goes off to an STR receiver, which is plugged into a little mini PC, which is running Windows 11. Now on this PC, we're using an older version of SDR Sharp. And the only reason for this is because we need to use a plugin called IF Average. Now this plugin didn't seem to work too well for me on this PC with the latest version of SDR Sharp, but maybe you'll have better luck than me. But if not, you can use the same version as I did and use 0.1727. Now I set the FFT resolution on the plugin to 1024, and the intermediate average to 1000. Now gain is set to around 350 and level around 400. Now there is a procedure in which you perform a background noise scan without the antenna connected before you start using this software. Now the window on the top left is the output from the IF average plugin, and it's here where we will hopefully see the hydrogen line appear. So that we can visualize the orientation of the Milky Way, I've installed an application called Stellarium. Now, luckily, this is a free application. Pointing the virtual camera within Stellarium towards the sky, you should be able to virtually see what's above you, assuming you have your location correctly set within the software settings. Now, as this is an extremely slow process, I left this running for a good 24 hours. Now I used a free application called Chronolapse, which took a screenshot of the computer's desktop every 60 seconds. After 24 hours, I put all of those screenshots into a time-lapse video, and here are the results. Now you can clearly see the peak appearing here, 
which is the detection of the hydrogen line. Now watch how it shifts frequency. This is most likely due to Doppler effect as the Earth is spinning. Other peaks and spikes shown on the IF average window are most likely local interference. But watching this back after many hours of setup and recording definitely puts a smile on my face and a sense of achievement. And while this may not be the most exciting thing to look at and observe, it's still a fascinating project that you can do at home with minimal equipment. And when you start reading through the science of why this happens, it's actually quite mind blowing, even how it was discovered way back in the 1930s. So this may be the start of my radio astronomy journey. If you like this kind of content, then please feel free to subscribe. If you already experiment with radio astronomy, let us know down in the comments below what you've discovered and what other projects you think I might be interested in and might be worth showing to others. Until the next video, take care and thanks for watching.